No. No. No, probably not. No. I would pay for a I pay for a lot of services online, but I would not pay for that. No. No. God, no. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's worth that. No, nah, it's not worth it. Shouldn't have to pay to talk to people. I think the only reason I use Facebook so much is because it is free. To me, it's kind of the equivalent of paying for, like, a LinkedIn account or, like, paying for email. It doesn't seem like you should be paid for email. It doesn't really make sense. It's a social network site. It's probably still for a dollar, but anything more higher than that, I don't think so. If it was like anything under ten dollars, I probably wouldn't be super concerned. Maybe if it was maybe it was like nine nine cents, like a dollar, kind of similar to like iTunes music type of thing. No amount, not even a dollar a month. No. Fifty cents a month. No. If people start charging for Facebook, then guaranteed something else will be created that you won't have to pay for. I think a lot of my friends would probably stop using it because you had to pay. I imagine someone would come in and create a new service altogether that would probably replace Facebook. All right, we're following the Facebook fallout tonight. Would you pay for Facebook? That could be a possibility at some point, especially as the social media Goliath tries to find revenue. It's losing from the mobile business. Facebook stock down 16% since its initial offering on Friday, and now it's being sued by its shareholders. Joining me tonight, uh, Dan Simon, CNN correspondent, joins us tonight from California. Hey, Dan, how about this lawsuit? What does this all mean? Well, I think in the short term, Vinny, this represents, you know, a pretty big public relations problem for Facebook and for Morgan Stanley. And obviously you have some frustrated investors out there. But if there's not like a smoking gun, if you will, that institutional investors got some real privy information, I think we're talking about gray area. And I think it'll be pretty hard for regulators to really dig in and find anything. And I'm not sure this lawsuit will really go anywhere. If the stock goes up, you know, 10, 15 percent in the next couple of days, I think this will largely blow over. And if Facebook produces a, a healthy earnings report in the second quarter, I think uh, this will all be water under the bridge. But no question right now, uh, Morgan Stanley and Facebook have a little bit of explaining to do. Uh, but I'm not sure that there's this smoking gun out there that, uh, you know, some people think may, may or may not exist. Hey, Dennis, do you think there's any chance that at some point, Facebook would be asking its users for money? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg would do that. I know they've experimented uh, with something uh, in that regard in New Zealand where people have paid a certain amount of money to have their own posts seen by all their friends. At this point, it's really an experiment. I think that would be a public relations nightmare for Facebook. I think you would see a mass exodus of users. It would, I think prompt other social services to create their own Facebooks, if you will, and gain some traction. I don't think you'll ever see that. I think Facebook right now really needs to get its advertising formula in gear, especially when it comes to mobile devices. If they can do that, they're going to have a very, very successful business in the future. Now, Larry Fischelson is also with his co-founder of Dynalink Communications. Larry, do you, do you think Facebook is going to um, have a, a different user experience now that they are a publicly traded company? Now that they're in this business, they're accountable to shareholders and, and the board and everything else. D is that going to clutter my experience even more on Facebook? No, it, it, I think it's just going to get better because what they're going to do is with all the money that they have through this IPO, they raised it for acquisitions. So as they buy other companies, as I see them getting into the content business, I, I could see them buying uh, Netflix as a good possibility and, and some other companies. You'll be, your user experience will be enhanced. So the whole idea of going public is raising money to get better and continue to, to disrupt. So your experience has to get better for Facebook to grow. So I believe it will. Uh, Dan Simon, how about uh, uh, Zuckerberg? Um, this guy, Zuckerberg got married, right? And then now we're, do you have any idea what happened at this wedding? I mean, this guy is super duper rich. Was it a super duper wedding or was it a little more low key? I don't really have uh, much to add about the wedding. I, I know from what I've read, there were about 100 people or so at the wedding. They thought they were going to a graduation ceremony. His wife, they met uh, back at Harvard. They've been together for some time. She just graduated from medical school. So it seems like they have a great relationship, and uh, congratulations to both of them.
Yeah, that, it's an interesting development uh, in, in the whole thing, the timing of it all. Larry, uh, do, do you see any, does that help Facebook? Does, I mean, how important is, is Zuckerberg and his image to the public in terms of the value of this company and the future of this company? Well, the, the value of Zuckerberg is, is what he put together, which is Facebook, which is the largest operating system in the world. I mean, we've seen how he is in public with, with the T-shirt and the hoodie. So Wait, know, wait, 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 wait a minute. He took off the T-shirt and the hoodie to get married, at least. Look at that. Did he? Yeah, he he's got a suit. He doesn't have the top button button, but he's got a nice suit and a tie. His wow. wife looks absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Um, so look at that. He is capable of getting dressed up, Larry. All right, good. So there's a start there. But I believe, you know what, everybody has seen the way that he is out in the open and, and, and has accepted it uh, for better or for worse, shall we say, no pun intended. So now it's just a matter of him executing. Um, you know, I, I don't think anybody expects him to be walking around in three-piece suits and, and, and changing his ways. But uh, execution is going to be key here. Dan, is there any panic over there in uh, Silicon Valley with Facebook and the fact that the price has gone down 16%, that they're being sued, that there's, you know, there's, there's some negative things coming out about Facebook? Well, no question, this is dominating the conversation, I would imagine, at Facebook and, and other companies in the Valley. I was there the day the, uh, the stock debuted, and, you know, it was a little bit of a roller coaster the first day. And I did speak to a senior Facebook executive that day who told me that he wasn't all that concerned, you know, when we saw it go up a little bit, then it went down, that they're looking at this thing in the context of a marathon, not just, just a couple of days of trading. But given the fact that you now have this lawsuit and that regulators are now looking into the quote unquote inside deal that may or may not have taken place with the institutional investors or the inside chatter, if you will, I would guess that there are people paying very close attention to this, and, but I have to believe that with Zuckerberg at the helm, he wants everybody to stay focused and focus on the product because after all, that is what he is most passionate about, is creating you know, great services and products uh, for the folks out there, and that all this must be an enormous distraction uh, for everybody there at the company. Well, and, and this is a question I have for you, Dan. You know, all the, you know, Facebook is huge, right? And what do they need to do? I mean, it seems the focus is on ways to make money off of Facebook rather than ways to make Facebook better for the user, right? A am I wrong here? Yeah. Well, you know, Zuckerberg has this, this motto where he says, we don't make products to make money. We make uh, money to make great products. And I think that is absolutely uh, the core of the mission there is that they want to create services that people will use and that people appreciate and that having all this money allows them to do just that. I would imagine that for Facebook to become an even more successful platform than it already is, it's going to have to figure out uh, a better mobile strategy because right now more and more people are accessing the Facebook app on their, on their mobile devices. And so they have to make that experience better Second, they have to figure out how advertisers will come over to that mobile platform because right now they're not making much money on the mobile platform. So those are the two keys for them going forward. All right, guys. Dan Simon, Larry Fischelson, thanks so much. Do appreciate it.